you're acting like we're, we're being fake behind There's closed no doors. There's no need. I'm not, I'm not, I didn't say Jordan, fake. you have to it's accept fake. other people's opinions. Who said fake? These, these are just oh. people's opinions. Yeah. You've dealt out a lot no. over the last no, few weeks. And the second this is that you are getting saying. opinions no, back at you, it's you're not. getting defensive. I it's interesting that, you know, the letter read out for um, Jordan and Erica brings up things that I've been saying, the sense that they focused on other people's relationships more than they focused on themselves. And in so doing, they haven't been able to do any work to sort of build their foundation. And now they're falling apart when other people start to give their opinions. And Laura was here for it. Laura was here for it because, you know, she was tired of Jordan giving his opinions and it was time for her to give hers and oh one of the experts did mention that actually jordan did tell them that he had ocd before he entered the experiment so i assume he told them he had these coping mechanisms and they felt he was safe to enter but i feel like this wasn't the best environment for him i feel this wasn't the best environment because it seems once he has an idea in his mind or once he understands things a certain way he's not willing to budge from it so he he's not as flexible or as adaptable as one would expect him to be on such a very stressful show it's different if it was just him and erica the problem is on Marriage at First Sight UK, you, you you get to spend time with the other couples. You get to hear their opinions. It's different from the US one whereby, yes, you do have group events, but they're not as many. And people, you know, it's mainly at times the girls are separated and the boys are separated. And so it's not as interactive as the UK version. So I think you would have benefited from going to something like that, maybe if you really wanted to be on a marriage show. But it seems their marriage is starting to fall apart and I saw this coming because of the way they kept going hard at other people's marriages. But anyway, I digress. Um, hey there, thanks for stopping by. It's Valerie. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. We have less than 200 left to go. We are almost at a thousand. Click the like button, turn on the notification bell for when I upload new videos and definitely leave a comment. In this episode, I'll be reviewing Married at First Sight UK, Season 8, Episode 27. Another episode, more drama. Anyway, obviously it's dinner party, final dinner party. And you have the couples just sort of catching up and getting ready for the dinner party. Um, Arthur seems to always make Laura a cup of tea and she never does anything for him. And it's like, at least do something for him. Anyway, I don't know. Maybe that's all we see. Um, you have, you know, um, Tasha and Paul, they seem fine. They don't really say much. They never said man much about their fight anyway. Mark and Sean, it's still the same old, same old. And it's like, Sean needs to make a decision and stop being indecisive. He needs to either choose to commit to his marriage or he needs to go home. He needs to stop leaving Mark in limbo or he needs to tell Mark the things that he wants changed so that their marriage can work instead of this concept. Oh, I need to make a decision. I need to make a decision. Oh, it's getting old. But at least they are now staying in the same, you know, apartment, even if it's in different bedrooms. Hey, it is what it is. Um... <clears throat> And then you have Adrian and Matt. Sadly for Matt, something happened with Adrian during her time with George. Whether she suddenly has a little crush on George and she's seen the positive qualities about him and that's what she likes, or something happened because how does she go from being okay to suddenly complaining bitterly about, oh, you know, our communication is bad. We don't have fun. We don't. And he is saying everything is amazing. And it's like, what more does she want from a guy? This guy is willing to do his best to be an ideal partner. A lot of people would give their left arm for someone who's just quiet and just allows you to be yourself and is not constantly in your business or constantly creating drama. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see how that plays out. You have Jordan and Erica saying, oh, you know, Erica is worried that she wanted to participate in the swap, but Jordan didn't want to. And so I don't know. Everybody knows how I feel. Somebody said apparently Jordan sustained a fractured rib. I didn't know. I did try to sort of look up, but the mouse that I saw was, I think, one of the previous participants who was in an accident or something. So I, I might look it up. Um, And so for me, I don't know. And also, someone was saying, you know, OCD, I shouldn't. As an HCP, I don't take any mental health condition uh, lightly. I'm not saying, you know, but I'm saying the way they're bringing it up is what I say is a bit suspect. 
in the sense that when something happens, then they bring it up to say, oh, this is the reason why. It's like people not accepting Tasha being fiery. That's the same thing. I know they're two totally different things. This is a mental health condition that somebody cannot control. Whereas your temper, you can try and work on your temper. Your mental health, even if you take medication, if you, even if you have therapy, some people will never fully recover. So I understand that bit, but we can't continue to excuse certain behaviors just because someone says they have a condition. And also what I was trying to say in the comments was that knowing that he's got OCD, OCD people want, you know, they're obsessive compulsive disorder. They want their things done a certain way and they want to do their things at a certain time and are very particular. Obviously, there are different levels of how particular they are. And so for him, if that was the case, I don't know why they put him on the experiment because this is very unstructured for him. This is very tense and very stressful environment. And with his OCD and previous traumas, I think he would have benefited from going to therapy first or to a, a, a show that's more therapy based than going to something like, you know, married at first sight and also given the fact that he said he's experienced this trauma and you know this is why he doesn't want to look around because he feels unsafe but on twitter or on on tiktok sorry he's busy taunting look and it's like how do you taunt someone who triggers your trauma how do you do that make that make sense for me that's what i don't get about jordan and that's why i'm suspect of his claims that he makes at certain times the producers are just milking, are just milking this Tasha and Erica scenario. And they seem to take pride in sort of making Tasha look like the bad guy or her being the bad guy in this situation because people haven't focused on what Erica has done. Instead, because Tasha stood up, people have focused on the action of standing up, but the words and the non-verbals from Erica, people have ignored. So the fact that the couples have been write, asked to write letters to other couples about their relationships doesn't make sense. And I don't get why they decided to give Erica and Jordan to Tasha and Paul to write. And to make it obvious that, you know, Tasha, when Erica and Jordan watch this, they will know Tasha and Paul wrote about them. They will know, you know, um, Tasha and Paul will know George and uh, Peggy wrote about them and the same. It doesn't make sense to me. I don't know why they sh only showed about three, four couples and the rest were anonymous. Make it make sense to me. Make it make sense. Why do they like to create drama amongst people? And why do they enjoy sort of uh, painting someone? as the bad guy and protecting other people because they should have shown everybody and who they were writing about. Make it make sense for me. So it's off to the dinner party and Adrian is still, if she talks about Matt having fun with her one more time and she's not 100% happy and it's like, who in a marriage is 100% happy? Please tell me, write in the comment section because I want to know how many people are 100% happy in there or how many people are 100% happy with their lives, let alone, let's start there. Let's start there. How, how many people are 100% happy with themselves? Anyway, I digress. And so you have Ros and Thomas, my favorites, are the first to arrive, which is amazing. They're followed by JJ and Ella. Mm. They're followed by Laura and uh, Arthur. And then, well, Jordan and Erica. Erica is very nervous because she knows people feel some type of way about them not participating in the experiment. So she's busy saying to Jordan, this is the second time she says she's worried about how people will respond because people are right to feel some type of way. They created or they participated in that big incident with Luke and, and Jay, and then suddenly they were MIA and then now they present themselves. People are going to feel some type of way and I can see it brewing because somebody said, ooh, awkward. Uh, well, Thomas has a conversation with Jordan, sort of trying to make him feel comfortable because you could see when they walked in that nobody made any sort of rush to sort of greet them or any sound that they were excited to see them. And so they felt uncomfortable. One thing I like about this group is they will teach you about yourself. When George tried to play up and went at Terence and Portia, well, he actually went at Portia, the group showed him about himself and he had to mellow himself. And the same thing happened with Jordan. What they're not happy about, they might not say we're not happy, but their actions will show you that you're not. Ha we're not happy. And you will have to correct yourself and humble yourself because Jordan was very humble. He was very mellowed because he realized that people are not happy with them and he could see that and he felt uncomfortable even erica all that chat 
nothing, nothing at all. And it was totally different to when Tasha and Paul walked in because people were loud. Ella obviously is close friends with Tasha. So she was excited to see, you know, Tasha. Um, Roz was excited to see her second husband, Paul. That was cute to see. And so it was a change in the atmosphere because it had become so tense when Erica and Jordan walked in. And then you have um, Adrian and Matt there the next walk in. Oh, I feel some type of way about the way Adrian is treating Matt. I really don't like it. Mark and Sean are the last to arrive. And it's as though someone has forced him to come. Really, I don't know who forced, uh, you know, Sean to come because he doesn't look happy to be there. Even, you know, Mark had to sort of hold on to him. He didn't even want to hold hands with Mark. With Mark and it's like, why? Just tell them you don't want to be there and go home and leave. You know, you're, they're not going to force you to stay. Anyway, <laughs> Laura, this is her opportunity. Jordan gave his advice and she kept telling him it's not it's not needed. And now she's decided to advise, you know, Erica. It's like, you are the last person. This is what I was trying to say in the comments. When there's already, you know, bad blood or there's already tension between you and somebody, whatever advice you have for them, they're not going to receive it because they, they're still carrying the baggage for whatever beef they have with you. And... As much as Laura was right to say to Erica, you missed out on the opportunity to, to sort of come back into the group after the incident with Luke um, and sort of get to know everybody else and also get to learn from everybody else. Jordan won't receive it in the best of light. I don't see him receiving it well and I can see tension brewing. I can see it's going to be a nightmare. It's going to explode. Um, I don't know. Now you have Erica sort of questioning, did I miss out? And yes, she did miss out. As I said in my review yesterday, I think if Jordan wasn't comfortable with leaving the apartment, they should have given him, as I said yesterday, Adrian, who he's comfortable with, someone who, you know, is very close friends with his partner. I don't know whether he felt that by Erica going, someone was going to have sex with her or be making out with her. It was just for them to get time apart and sort of learn from each other. And he took that opportunity away from her and I can see it exploding but hey it is what it is I know I shouldn't be laughing I feel bad for laughing but Laura has been frothing at the mouth she's been looking for an opportunity to give her opinion back at Jordan because Jordan has had opinions about every single couple in the room and he's made his opinions known to everyone irregardless of whether they wanted to hear it or not and so Laura and Arthur go in <laughs> I, t I said this, I said they've decided to be a united front and whoever comes for them, they're coming for you double. And Laura said, don't come for me unless I call for you. Well, Jordan came for her and now she's, you know, responding. So she brings up, you know, Arthur sort of brings up, do you not feel like you missed anything from this experience to Erica? And Erica is sort of saying, you know, hearing from everybody about how it went. Yeah, I can see that I did lose out, you know, by not participating. But Jordan wasn't in the best of places for me to do that. So I had to put Jordan first. And so Jordan, all he heard was, you know, Jordan is controlling me. So we have to do what Jordan wants. And that's it. And he you could see him getting angry and he's starting to get upset and Laura said you've been giving opinions to everybody in the group and so why are you offended now that we have opinions we also have opinions if you're going to give them be prepared to receive them you can't just want to give opinions and then when everybody else wants to give theirs it's now a problem he can't do that and maybe he shouldn't, as I said, have been in this environment because obviously with his OCD, maybe that's why he really wants people to to understand him and to make sure that people do the right thing. And, you know, he tells his truth and whatever. But he also has to understand that some people also feel some type of way and they're going to come at him and he cannot control how people behave or how they respond to his opinions. And you have the peanut gallery because the producers have been smart ever since the incident with Tasha and Erica. They've always kept Tasha and Paul separate from Erica and Jordan. So they're always at different ends of the table. And so when this all started, 
if someone could have given them their popcorn because you have Ella and Tasha and Tasha's going what's going on because of the loud shouting and you know Ella's going I don't know and they're all looking everybody's now looking at Erica and Jordan because they said they were the best couple and yet they're falling apart in front of everyone and everyone is there for it you can see that Thomas obviously feels bad for them but I think part of him is like well you give advice expect to receive it I think if anyone else had had the commotion that Eric and Jordan had, people would have stood up and gone to pacify them and sort of try and help and sort of mediate or sort of moderate whatever's going on. But because of the way Jordan has rubbed people the wrong way, people just kept eating, drinking and talking and chatting like nothing was happening. Um, so it's sad, it's sad that they're falling apart, but sadly they're ripping, you know, what they sold. And Jordan, you can actually see now his OCD in the sense that he, once he's got an idea in his head, you know, that's it. He's not willing to budge. He's not flexible. And this is what I was trying to say that I don't think this is the right environment for him because it needs you to be able to be flexible, to adapt and to adjust and to sort of twist and turn. And I don't think he thinks that way. I think he's got his mind set on something and that's what he wants. And if things don't go that way, then things fall apart. In the meantime, you have my favorites, <laughs> Ross and, and Thomas. Oh my God, Ross has really turned Thomas into this, I don't know. Because, you know, she's wearing her egg and Thomas has decided to be naughty. And you can see Ross giggling and having an amazing time. Jo George is looking and is wondering what the hell is going on over there. But, you know, Thomas is enjoying himself, being in control. And, you know, R Ross is, is enjoying Thomas being in control and making her happy. So amazing for them. So the letters come out and personally, I think if people hadn't talked about, you know, Laura being derogatory towards Arthur, I would have been surprised and surprise, surprise, they spoke about it. And that letter was, was very abrupt and very rude to some, some aspects of it because it asked them to look into each other's eyes and sort of see whether they saw a future together. And if not, why are you still here? And it's like... Mm. That's not your place to say. That's not your place to ask. They've never asked anybody to help them with their relationship. Whatever goes on in their apartment, they've dealt with it themselves. Yes, Laura, her delivery has not been the best, but I don't think it's right for people to say that. And Laura is right to question until she takes sort of Arthur into her environment and tries to make things work. She cannot say, I see a future with you. Arthur, he sees a future because he comes across as a people pleaser or someone who's willing to adjust or ad adapt to to fit a situation so i don't know we'll see how that plays out rose and thomas obviously no one was going to say anything terrible about them you know people acknowledge that they always l look at sort of learning opportunities and take whatever they learn and implement it and they're going to be a strong couple they are a strong couple, in my opinion. They are the surprise strong couple. I had high hopes for them at the start, and I'm so, so, so amazed at, at where they are now and how happy the fact that Thomas is able to use, you know, a sex toy at the dinner table with everybody else there. It's something I would never have expected from him. The fact that, you know, he's open to dirty talking in the bedroom and L Roz is very happy about this. Oh, my God, I love this for them, and I'm so excited for them. I really am. Next up is Jordan and Erica, but can I just say I am proud of Tasha and Paul because they could have gone low, but they went high. They spoke about the fact that, you know, you seem to be moving at a great pace. Um, however, it seems you're more focused. And I've said this before, they're more focused on other people's relationships than they are on their own. And the fact that they give their opinions, yes, they are welcome, but they're not always needed. So unless somebody asks for your opinion, then don't give it. Why should you give, you know, and for Jordan to be so seething, upset and whatever, it's like, that was tame. Even, even Mark said, oh, that was very sweet. That was very sweet because they actually told him, we wish your marriage, you know, all the best. They could have gone low and low. They could have criticized them, but they, they sort of gave constructive feedback in the sense that, yes, you're doing amazing. Stop focusing on other people. Yes, you have opinions. You don't always need to give them and try and interact with the group because the group is going to help you when you face challenges in your marriage. What more could you need? 
What more could you need? And Arthur, Arthur wasn't here for that because they got a salty letter and he was ready. He went in and Jordan, Jordan is now becoming defensive. And Laura will always say, Jordan, you like to give opinions. So you have to sit there and listen to other people give their opinions as well. You can't want to give opinions. And then when people want to give you opinions, oh, why are you doing this to me? No, it's not going to work that way. Oh my God. I, I I was happy for for Tasha and Paul that their their letter was not was very constructive, and so people have nothing to pull or to criticize them for. In my opinion, with Adrian and Matt, I personally don't get their problem. Really, I don't, because the way Adrian is making it seem, it's as though you know. It's like watching paint dry, being around Matt. I don't know what George did or what he said to her. That's convinced her that, you know, he he's the sort of type of personality that she needs. I think you all don't need to be very hyper. Anyone who's been in a relationship with someone will tell you that two hyper people will exhaust one another at some point. It needs someone to be hyper and someone to be mellow to sort of calm each other down or sort of one will go down and one will sort of bring the other up and they'll meet somewhere in the middle and so for her to say that you know she one is one of them seems like an optimist that's who Matt comes across and she seems like a realist and it's like yes you're being realistic but to what extent are you being realistic are you being realistic in the sense that you feel you'd function better with someone with high sort of very outgoing personality they would exhaust you. It's okay for a day or so, or for a week or so, but not every day for forever. I don't get that. And it's so sad that Matt is really optimistic. He really wants this to work. And I have a feeling that if Adrian is not careful, she's going to regret her decision and her choices that she's making in this marriage because this man seems amazing. He says he's trying to make her laugh. He's trying to make her happy. This is him at his best. I feel she needs to give him an opportunity. I feel she needs to leave the experiment with him, go back into into the real world and see how he functions in his own comfort zone and see if he's still the same person. If he is, then maybe she, if she, that's not what she wants, she can leave. It's a bit rich. And I knew Tasha would want to know who said whatever. I think she had the suspicion that it was George and she was waiting for him to own up. I like the fact that she was mature enough. She didn't kick things up. She didn't scream. She didn't shout, but she was able to eloquently express herself. For George to turn around and say, oh, you know, Peggy wrote the positives. I wrote the negatives. Why is he hiding Peggy's input in this letter? She was there. She watched it be written. If she wasn't on board with it, she should have told him not to include it so for them it's a bit rich for him to say oh you know you behave like a little child you're a bit childish and whatever your wife got upset because she asked you what if hypothetically i have an only fans account and you said it is what it is whatever you want to do with your body do you and she threw a tantrum on your honeymoon and you felt that was mature enough and yet you have the audacity the audacity to, to, to call out Tasha, please make it make sense. How many times has your wife criticized you about your job and stuff? It's a bit rich coming from George and um, Peggy. You, <laughs> you know how I feel when I like someone, I defend them. Yes, people are right to say Tasha, the way she handles situations is not right. It's not a, pro a fault that Paul, you know, is a bit more mellow and is sort of, you know, a bit calmer but this is what he asked for in a relationship he wanted someone to bring him out of his shell he didn't want someone who would just be a yes ma'am yet no sir yes ma'am no sir and so for them to sort of start critiquing hmm. i wonder if there have been other arguments that we haven't heard about because when oh you're always very fiery you know in your arguments in her arguments with her husband or with everybody make it make sense i didn't get that um, yes, does Tasha need to work on a communication style? Yes, but it is what it is. Does she have the self-awareness? Does she have the ability to self-reflect? Yes, she does because she's owned up that she does behave a certain way. But the fact that she called out, I think she knew it was, it was George. And I think she felt some type of way. I have beef with George with how he spoke to Portia and how he spoke to Tasha. I don't like that because with everybody else, it seems to be okay. So make it make sense. 
Next up is George and Peggy. From their guilt, it looks it looks like uh, Ross and Thomas wrote that. It looked like, and they tried to be sweet about Peggy. I think because they knew she would take it some type of way, and so they wanted to shield her. Even though we know, oh, you know, you have stood by your husband. You're very supportive. You're this. She has been hypercritical of her husband. If we are going to say Laura is derogatory towards her husband, then she has been hypercritical of her husband and his jobs that he does. So please. Be honest. Don't try and sugarcoat something. And, you know, people talk about the intimacy. And she's, oh, well, we do do other things outside of sex. You know, you don't need to have sex. Oh, we and Paul is saying, Paul the expert is saying, oh, yes, George said he's prepared to wait. Yes, he did. But to his friend, he said he can only wait for so long before it's time for him to check out. And I have a feeling he's ready to check out. He just wants to t stay in the experiment until the end. Or if he feels it will benefit him to stay with Peggy for a little bit longer, he's going to do that. But do I think he's happy in his current state? No, no. Even their kiss, oh, they do kiss. It was very awkward. These people have been together for forever. Why are they still awkward when they kiss? Make it make sense. Make it make sense. I think because JJ and Ella is talked about, you know, the fact that Ella talks about sex a lot and she makes JJ uncomfortable and maybe she needs to calm down a bit so that JJ will feel comfortable enough and maybe the sex will come at that point. And he says he's attracted to her. You know, it's just that he wants it to work. So he wants to take his time. Personally, I feel someone should sit down with Ella and ask her, what is her definition of a relationship? What is she looking for in a partner? What does she expect in a relationship? Or what does she expect her partner to contribute to the relationship? And what does she, ex what does she have to offer to that relationship? And people will be surprised because all we've heard about is sex, sex, sex. Unless it's the editing, that's all we've heard about with JJ and Ella. And I don't know how much longer this can go on. Last couple up is Sean and Mark. Um, I said it. I said Sean would burn out and it seems that's what he's done and he's defaulted to his, you know, normal habits, which is to run. Because they're asked, you know, you need to be honest with one another. You need to make sure that you are sort of taking each other into consideration in this relationship. It's just not one-sided. And so in doing that, in reading the letter, Sean then said, oh, I, I have an epiphany. You know, I've, I now know what I want to do and what I want to sort of say. And it's like, you've known what you wanted to do. The producers were holding you back because they were trying to create some drama and create a moment. And so for him to sit Mark down and tell him, oh, you know, uh, I think I'm done. This is it. And it's like, you've been done for forever. You've been done for forever. Please move on. It's time for you to move on and stop lying to one another and stop lying to everybody and making it seem like, uh, you know, you're making the effort because had the two of you really been interested in one another and wanted to make this work, you, you, sh you would have sat down. You would have asked each other, what do you want in this relationship? Yes, Mark expressed himself, but Sean didn't express himself. I think Sean was there for, was there for, might have been there for the right reasons, but as soon as he heard about, you know, Mark's history, he checked out. I think he checked out and was just waiting for an opportunity for him to move on. And as soon as it presented itself, he's moved on and is, you know, content with his answer. I think he should have tried a bit longer. I think the idea of losing Sean scared Mark so much that he was willing to make the necessary changes. So it's sad that they've broken up because I always root for love, but I wish them all the best. And I love how everybody was supportive and was there, um, you know, to sort of uplift them. That was good. Anyway, thanks guys for watching. Please don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe and click the link in my video to watch my review from episode 26. Bye guys.